So Lisa, as you think about the customized learning implementation here at Harrisburg High School, mm -hmm. what makes it significantly different from an industrial age, a uh, traditional classroom? It's, it's significantly different in terms of, you know, our pacing, how we're customizing for students, because if students don't master the concepts right away, they have time to really kind of explore that and, um, you know, take the time to really understand it. We expect a mastery level from our students, and so we expect them to reach a certain percentage, um, usually about 90% for our advanced students. They have to get 90% mastery before they can move on. And so they have a little bit of flexibility in terms of if they don't get something, that's okay. You know, we have time that we can kind of work with that. Um, you know, in a traditional classroom, if you didn't get it, we moved on and then that was it. And so uh, we've got a little bit of flexibility with timing. We also are encouraging them this year to do some level four projects. So projects that they have to delve into the material a little bit more. And so they have to design a project on their own. And so they are trying to incorporate as many different learning targets as they can um, with what interests them. I have a student doing one, uh, pulling in geometry with evolution, with um, you know, some English stuff, and so pulling all of the different curriculums together. So, a little bit different. So, why is that difference important to you as a teacher? I think I wanted to see kids really understand the concepts. I think that I stood in front of a classroom for 12 years and I knew that they understood it, but I don't think that they could explain it back to me. They couldn't apply it to their everyday lives. And, you know, our chemistry units right now are designed around life skills. So antacids, airbags, um, polymers, nuclear chemistry. So things that they can kind of relate to. Um, and so pulling in those topics. Um, and so we have a little bit more flexibility because we're customizing that the students, if they really like a topic, they can go a little bit deeper in that and then they can you know go into deeper content with other things as well so so now you've been down this journey for <laughs> most of a year and a half yep. what would you identify as the starting point or the ramp in point for you relative to customized learning um, it was probably um, April before we started um, the school year um, Kayla Cunningham and I started kind of meeting what does this look like? How do we want to apply this to our chemistry classroom? We kind of did a pretty big switch in terms of normal freshmen do physical science. We switched that to chemistry. So it was a pretty big jump in terms of the content that we were covering. Uh, but we both felt a little bit more confident with that and how we could customize that and make that apply to the students' lives. So it's been a process. You know, this year I've added a few more courses in and so trying to get the curriculum done for those courses as well. Um, but it just takes time. Will that bell ring again in a moment, or are we? Um, are we in okay three with? minutes, probably. All right, let's do another question okay. next here. So, so what was the biggest challenge or obstacle to getting started or getting um, making progress with the implementation? I think our biggest challenge was last year. You know, a lot of the students heard um, the phrase the it's at your own pace and they took that to mean oh well we don't have to do it until we're ready to do it and so um, it was trying to get them to kind of get over that hump of yes it's your own pace but there's also teacher pacing and we have to get you through courses and you know I won't forget last December I think it was I met with a student she goes I guess the moment is now and so we have to start moving now and I said yes that's exactly what needs to happen um, so it was getting students um, who were kind of used to you know having the information directly given to them you know taking ownership of that and spending time watching the video lessons that we make because for every topic we do we have a video lesson that goes along with it so it's still um, the two of us as teachers interacting and you know doing some demos and so use that outside of class and then come ask us your specific questions and so trying to get that switch of mindset of just give me the answer give me the answer give me the answer so so how has customized learning changed your role as a teacher and the role of learners I would say you know I consider myself more of a facilitator now a little bit in terms of I'm helping them with the content they are totally taking ownership of what they're doing um, biology we're doing a very much inquiry based approach so it's an inquiry discussion based course and so they're working together to discuss the concepts and kind of explore the concepts rather than me giving them a PowerPoint saying okay memorize this and spit this back to me it's they're applying it they're designing labs they're doing hands-on things um, and so I'm participating in those discussions and facilitating some of those discussions a little bit more. 
So how would you describe the reaction of teachers to customized learning? Now, I'm, I'm sorry, I just asked the wrong question. We are not <laughs> the wrong list here. I thought, this doesn't make sense. Here's the question I want. Um, how has cu customized learning impacted your relationship with learners? Um, I think that I have gotten personally to know my learners a lot better. I can tell them exactly where they stand. I know exactly what they know. Um, it's allowed me to kind of help some students kind of figure out what path they kind of want to go in. I have a sophomore right now who was never considered a traditional advanced student and now she's far exceeding my expectations and she's looking at colleges. She's looking at internship opportunities and so you know just by having that close relationship I've been able to kind of help her figure out what path she needs to go on next and um, I feel as though I really am getting to know my students a lot better. Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> what evidence would you offer that customized learning is impacting learning and learners positively? Um, I think they're more learning more than just content. I think that they're learning time management. I think that they are uh, figuring out how to use their time a little bit better in terms of, you know, when can I slack off a little bit more? When can I have to, you know, push up a little bit more? I think that they are more confident. You know, they know that if they don't master their quiz, they're going to have extra, you know, assignments, extra practice. And so they're taking the time to kind of learn it and master it before they actually apply it on, you know, some type of quiz or test. And um, so it's, it's impacting them in terms of they're more focused. They are getting more out of our content, I think. Now you have a uh, year and a half under your belt. You're nearly an expert. Oh, to I learning. wish. And so what kind of advice would you offer teachers in other schools who are considering customized learning? Um, I would talk to some teachers that have done it, talk to some teachers that have lived it, um, and be ready to give up control. You know, for me, I was a teacher that I was in constant control of my classroom. I knew exactly what the kids were doing. I, you know, we will do this, we will do this, we will do this. And with the customized, you kind of have to let some of that go and realize that students are going to make mistakes, but they learn from those mistakes as well. We would be interested, Lisa, in having you share an anecdote or an experience from this last year and a half that was particularly meaningful or impactful to you in terms of this implementation process. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'll go back to that student that, you know, was talking about the moment is now. Um, she was in my advanced class and she was a little bit behind and, um, you know, she, she looked at me and she said, I just have to do this. I just have to do my work and I'll be fine. And so I think that that's what, that's what this is all about, is they have to realize that they have to want to do this in order for it to you know, be successful. So. so as you look down the road, Lisa, and think about, say, five years down the road, what do you hope uh, Harrisburg High School looks like in terms of the experience for your students and you as teachers? Well, I kind of envision, you know, that they come in and they take chemistry as freshmen and then they, you know, do some biology. And then what we would like to do is do some individual electives where it's really designed based on what they want to study. I have a sophomore uh, right now in advance who loves genetics and she wants to do genetics things. And so I talked to her and so we're going to develop a course that works for her and figure out, you know, how can we meet our South Dakota standards but still get you the content that you want. And so I'd like to see more of those types of offerings for our students. We've asked the questions that we were interested in asking. Is there something else that you would want us to know or you'd want to be able to share about this customized learning experience? Um, I will say that it's probably been my most exhausting time as a teacher ever, uh, but it's been my re most rewarding in terms of dealing with parents, dealing with students, um, dealing with my coworkers. You know, I have a, you know, we have a cohort that we really work together and we have kind of bonded over this experience of how do we change education and make it better.